Hi guys, it's attorney Kelly Bagler, the queen of business law and your host of Go Legal Yourself podcast. I hope you had a fantastic week. The last sidebar we left off was where I provided you with a pretty good definition of what a startup is. Now, what do you need to do in order to actually start your business on the right legal foot? Well, you have options. You actually need to incorporate your business. Why incorporate your business? It's a good question, wouldn't you think? And people actually pay thousands of dollars. They go to attorneys for this exact same advice. And I'm offering this advice to you today because I love helping entrepreneurs. I love helping uh, at least get your dream started, right? Don't, don't just sit there and dream about it, actually do it. Let, let's put a plan in place so you can become successful at what you are doing, which is you're going to start a business. So um, what legal entity should you be? That's, a, that's a, a very good question, right? Well, when starting out, it is important to determine what form of business structure will work best for your specific situation. Choosing the best legal structure for your business requires knowledge of your line of work and understanding of local, state and federal laws, believe it or not. The state and local federal laws come into play, especially when it comes to taxes. So when you actually have an incorporated entity, you've, you, you've selected an entity and you have filed your paperwork with your state, you are now an incorporated entity and then taxes come into play. So the legal structure you, structure you choose for your business is one of the most important decisions you will make in your startup process. Let me say that one more time because it's really crucial that you understand this part. The legal structure you choose for your business is one of the most important decisions you will make in your startup process process. Your choice of structure can greatly affect the way you run your business, impacting everything from liability and taxes to control over your company. I have heard it all, friends. I really have. I've heard it where an entrepreneur has started her business and she's she's put in money and sweat, sweat equity and, and she, she's just you know, hasn't slept in months because she's running this business and she's trying to make money at it and there's a demand for it, which is fantastic. Well, unbeknownst to her, she, she needs money now. She's running out of money, so she needs money for marketing. And she decides to go into a partnership with someone that's bringing in the money. Now she's just lost control over her own company. You have to be very, very careful when you are out there trying to get money for your company and who you go into business with. And we will touch upon that a bit later on because it's crucial. Now, going back to choosing the right business entity, right? So choosing the right business entity allows you as the entrepreneur to reduce liability exposure, right? What is liability exposure? Liability from being personally sued. So why would anyone incorporate their business? The number one reason why is because if they get sued, the person suing them can only sue the company and not you personally as an individual. What do you own as an individual, right? What do you hope to own as an individual? Maybe some of you have home, you have a home, You've got some really nice cars, you have a bank account, maybe you've got some savings. All of that is liability. It's all exposure to you being sued personally, as opposed to you being sued as a business. The business isn't going to hold your house and it's not going to hold your cars and it's not going to hold your bank account. So all of that, your personal assets are protected from potential lawsuits. That is the number one reason why anyone would want to incorporate their business. It reduces liability exposure, minimizes taxes. That's a huge one. It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you can keep at the end of the day, right? You've heard that saying over and over again, minimizing taxes and ensuring that your business 
can be financed and ran successfully from the beginning. Now, you tell me, if you go to a bank and you say, it's just me, I'm an individual, I'm a sole proprietor, I haven't incorporated, but I want a loan, what are they going to attach the loan to? Your house, your cars, your bank accounts, right? And if you fail, you've just lost your home, your cars, and your bank account. Well, if you go in as an incorporated entity, the entity is more likely to actually get a loan than you as an individual person. Keep that in mind too. Incorporating also provides you as business owners with a mechanism for ensuring that the business operates, the operations of the business will continue if rather than being terminated, right? If say you decide to say, say you get hit by a bus tomorrow. Sorry, I had to mention that, but it's, it's realistic. Like we, we all don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. All we can do is our best today. So in case you get hit by a truck tomorrow, what's going to happen to your business? If it's incorporated, it will continue. It will continue. If you're just an individual as a sole proprietor, your business dies with you, unfortunately. So Huge, huge advantages why you should incorporate, huge, huge disadvantages why uh, you should not incorporate, right? So when choosing the business entity, you should consider the following. Now, remember, friends, people pay big money for this. Are your personal assets at risk from liabilities arising from your business? Anytime you are doing business with the public anytime there's always a huge risk always because anyone can sue it anytime for any reason keep that in mind the second consideration is are you able to offer ownership to key personnel right yes it's only you at the moment but say you found that perfect employee that is dedicated to your success are you just going to let that employee leave no, you would want to incentivize them, right? If somebody owns a piece of your company, they're going to want to work harder for it too because now they own it too. The third consideration is what are the continued costs of operating and maintaining your business? Keep that in mind. And before you go down this road, right, before you, you jump on your idea, you have to have some sort of plan right you i doubt that you go on vacation without a plan right you you probably spend months and months working with a travel agent to secure the right lodging to secure the right attractions to secure the right tickets well the same thing with your business this business is going to be your baby you don't just start it and leave it in the middle of the road and hope and pray that it doesn't get hit so you have to have some sort of plan. You have to have a business plan. I know business plans might have a bad rep, but I've actually got the perfect business plan for you. It's on the website, golegalyourself.com. You can purchase the business plan right off the site and start using it today, today. Highly recommend it if you do not have a business plan, at least start one now. Start getting your thoughts on paper because when you see them, now they become realistic, right? So on our next sidebar, I'll be going into some of the most common legal entities that are out there and eventually what would, which one would be the right one for you. So I hope you have a wonderful week again, friends, and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care.